Comparative advantage is a very important concept in economics. It just means who can produce something at a lower opportunity cost. Remember, opportunity cost is what you give up when you make a decision. The formula that you'll use with this is we give up over if we make. So here's an example of the kind of question that you might get on the AP microeconomics test. So you're told the United States in one hour, let's say, can produce two cars or they can produce 12 computers. Japan can produce in one hour either five cars or 15 computers. So the question that you're asked, who has the comparative advantage in making cars? So whatever product you're asked about, that's the if we make part. The product that you're giving up or the other product that they give up producing, that's the we give up, that's the numerator in your fraction. So here's how we'll calculate it. For the United States, for every car they produce, they give up the production of 12 computers. So what we'll do to calculate that out is we'll look at, um, again, we give up over if we make. If they make cars, they can produce two. What they give up is computers, which is 12. So 12 over 2 reduces to 6. What does 6 mean? It means that for every car that the United States produces, they give up the opportunity to produce 6 computers. For Japan, we give up over if we make. Again, they were asked about the production of cars. Japan can produce five cars, or they can produce 15 computers. So if they make uh, cars, they can make five. They give up the opportunity to make 15 computers. 15 over five reduces to three. What does three mean? It means that for every uh, car that they produce, they give up the production of three computers. Comparative advantage is who can produce something at a lower opportunity cost. Therefore, Japan would have the comparative advantage in producing this product. They can produce uh, and only give up uh, three computers. The United States has to give up a total of six. That's the opportunity cost. Now, let's look at who has a comparative advantage now in making computers. Again, here's the numbers. If the United States produces computers, they can produce 12. So we've got to look at this for the United States, and we've got to look at this for Japan again. So the United States if they make computers, the United States can make 12. So that is um, what they can make. So that's going immediately to the denominator. The other product that they give up producing is cars, which is 2. So 2 over 12 reduces to 1 sixth. What does 1 sixth mean? It means for every computer they produce, they give up the opportunity to produce 1 sixth of a car. For Japan, again, we give up over if we make. If Japan makes um, makes computers, again back to this sheet, if they make computers we can see that Japan could make 15. So that is our denominator. What they give up is cars. Japan if they make cars would give up 5. So 5 over 15 is their fraction. That reduces to one third of a car. What does that mean? It means for every computer they produce they give up the production of one third of a car. In this case, since one sixth is less than one third, the United States has the comparative advantage in making computers. As you may know, David Ricardo came up with the idea that whoever has a comparative advantage um, could make a trade for that product. So in other words, um, being that the United States has a comparative advantage in making computers, they'll make the computers for both countries, perhaps. Being that um, Japan has a comparative advantage in making cars, maybe Japan would produce that product and trade it to the United States. So David Ricardo's idea is whoever has a comparative comparative advantage could make a trade and that would benefit both countries.